one of the things that I get asked about a lot is exponential functions and the channel has a bunch of stuff on it that has exponential functions sometimes it's nice to have a really quick review of all of it so that's what this is anyway it's not going to cover everything just be aware just the basics I'm going to compare exponential functions to linear equations that y equals mx plus b thing the thing about a linear equation such as y is equal to 2x plus 5 something like that they tell a little bit of a different story this is my slope it represents change like how much changes over time and this is my y-intercept of course and that represents sort of a starting point I don't know why I put y is 2x plus b when it should be 5 but I'll fix that in just a second if I say 5 it should be 5 now so if I'm up here at 5 let's just say it's right here the story it's telling me is to start there and to change by 2 most of the time it means up 2 over 1 or down 2 over 1 and I make a straight line so the story of a linear equation is that the amount of change the is consistent and constant so it's not just that it's changing in some convenient way that goes up a little bit sort of like it it's the exact amount of change over and over and over again over time that's why it's an arithmetic sequence or it's linked to arithmetic sequence because when I have an arithmetic sequence I'm looking at adding the same amount or subtracting which is the same as adding a negative so that's what that's how a linear is set up an exponential function on the other hand is a little bit different when I have an exponential function the form changes but the ideas are the same so I have y equals a times bx as you can see the big difference is that the variable is the exponent but again even though the letter values or the letter uh, approximate names characteristics change sorry about that um, a is my starting point that's where I begin things and then B represents change why wouldn't they use B for change on the other one who knows that's just how it goes so this represents change because I'm multiplying by a specific amount and then x of course is my input variable the thing about an exponential function is the change is a consistent and constant percent change if I'm doubling something I'm multiplying it by 200 percent if I'm multiplying everything by 5 it's 500 percent it's not the same amount over and over it's a consistent percent change if you look at it in that way it's also multiplying and it's a geometric sequence so 4 8 16 32 the amount is different every time because this is going up by 4 and this is going up by 8 but I'm multiplying by 2 or essentially I'm making a 200 percent change now that's the basics of how it all works let's look at uh, another topic in re that relates to exponential functions which is of course compound interest this is probably the most likely thing that you'll see you'll see you buy something and it goes up by this amount um, speaking of going up or down the uh, value increasing is appreciation and the, the value going down is depreciation so uh, generally they'll they won't use this term they'll just say um, increase so why worry about it uh, but if you see depreciation or decrease it means the same thing so if I have this so say I have something that's five thousand dollars and I'm going to increase by five percent a year If I can get this pen to write, it's even better. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to go back to a times bx. The starting point, of course, here is 5,000, so it's right there. Now, if I want to increase by 5%, I can't just multiply 5,000 by 5%, because that won't show me an increase. It'll just tell me what 5% of 5,000 is, and that's not very helpful. So instead, what I have to do is multiply 5,000 by something that will maintain that 5,000 in my final answer. So I say 1, or 5,000 times 1. Then I want to add 5%, so an increase of 5%. So I say plus... 0.05 and then I can do it for however many times that I want to do it so generally speaking I'll do this and it'll end up being combined together so if you see this this means a 5% increase because I'm multiplying by 5,000 and then 5% 5 of 5,000 and adding those things together the way that a, a compound interest statement or any exponential function really works is that it sort of works like a computer code so if I have 5,000 
and I do 1.05 just for the first time. So I'm running it once, 5% of 5,000 by the way is uh, 250, so I'm going to add that to 5,000 and end up giving me 5,250. But if I'm running it over and over again, and say this is 5, each time that I quote unquote run it, it gives me a new A value. So then I'm not doing 5% of 5,000 anymore, I'm doing 5% of 5,250. So the second one is representing this. So when I run this, I get 55215.5. Five, and since it's money, we'll say it's 50 cents. But I could also do 5,000. And say run it twice. So that's what this number really represents, because it'll give me the same value. So doing 5,000 twice gives me this. So essentially, I'm running the code over and over and over again. And that's how compound interest works. It's how exponential functions work, really. What happens if I don't want to do an increase? And by the way, I should have noted that anytime you see a value here that's one, it's more than one, it means it's an increase. But what happens if I want to do a decrease? How could I tell the difference? Well, obviously, the major change would be that I'm going to subtract instead of add. So I do 5,000, and then I do 1 minus 0.05. And then whatever x happens to be here, this will end up being 0 .0, or 0 0.95. So the big difference here, I guess, is to say that the any value less than 1 that you're multiplying means that the value is going down. If you write it like this first, if you always write this step, it makes it way easier to see what the heck is going on. There's one more little kernel to all this that we need to discuss, and then we're done. That last little change in all this is the idea of compounding, which is what compound interest is all about. What we were working with before was a simple annual rate. It increased 5% per year. Generally, when you're given percentages, it's talking about an annual rate. But what happens if I don't compound it that way? Some of them I might see are semi-annual, which means two times per year. You may see quarterly, which I didn't write in here, but I guess I could. Quarterly would be, of course, four times a year. Monthly, which is 12 times a year. Daily, which is 365 times per year. And then there's uh, constantly, which we're not going to cover here, but it involves E. So take a look at that. It deals with the idea of a logarithm. Now, if I have my original statement that I had before, let's do increases and do 1, point, or 1 plus 0 0.05. And then I have my n value here, my x value, whatever you want it to be. n is generally the, the letter that they use or the variable that they use because it's a number of times. The only difference is when they give me this rate, that's an annual rate. So when they say I want to compound it in a different schedule than every year, I have to divide or break that percentage into different levels of parts. So if I'm doing semi-annually, the big difference is 0 0.05 divided by 2. So that means that I split that point, that 5% out into 2.5% and I apply it twice. The other thing that changes is that the amount of times we're going to quote unquote run the code or compound the interest is going to change as well. So this part changes, so I guess I'll do like a little highlighter thing here. And the other part that changes is up here because now I have to do it two times per year so I do it twice as often so I'll do two in right there that's semi-annually for quarterly which we'll do here 5,000 times 1 point a uh, 1 plus 0 0.05 divide by 4 or divided by 4 I should say and then of course 4 in for the rest of them we'll just do this move here uh, 0 0.05 divided by 12, and then 12 in, and then of course daily would be 0.05 divided by 365, and then it's 365 times in. So I give it a little bit less of the value in terms of the percentage that I'm uh, applying, but I apply it a lot more often. I'm running the code here, if it's 10 years, 120 times as opposed to 10. So that's the big shift in terms of compound interest, and that's a pretty good um, 
pretty short, I should say, it's not necessarily good, uh, analysis of an exponential function so that you can use all the parts. Like, there, of course, there's more depth to all this, but as a, you know, less than 10 minutes or around 10 minutes, this should give you uh, pretty much what you need to be able to work with it and experiment. Also, it might help you to know that occasionally you'll get something like uh, that they'll tell you it's compounded quarterly and they'll go ahead and mark it down. So if they have 1 plus... 0.02, and they tell you that it's already been compounded quarterly, it means the original value is 2 times 4. So the original value is 8% annual interest. So there you go.